Now we will look into informed search, which is an which has an additional feature of knowledge related to utility, cost, or the domain knowledge in the search strategy. Um, so one of the most famous informed search algorithm is called Greedy Best First Search. Uh, it is called Greedy because the idea is that there's an estimated heuristic function, which, uh, which will tell us how far are we from the goal. And when we know that there are more than one options, we will choose the option that has the least cost, which is apparently estimated to be closest to the goal. Now, estimation can be correct or incorrect because we it's a heuristic, but because we are just hopping onto the first best option without any other strategy, we call it a greedy approach. Um, if you look at this, let's say that the way heuristic function is developed is that I want to know that what is the distance uh, from C to B. And if I, if I just ignore all the obstacles in the path and all the possible traversing paths, I just ignore that. I just know this is where C is and this is where B is. I, I just take a Manhattan distance or a Euclidean distance. I just uh, add the blocks on the y-axis and the blocks on the x-axis distance and find out what is the exact distance from this point to this uh, in terms of Manhattan distance, let's say. And I do the same for D then I'll have an estimated distance of C from B and of D from B. Remember, I have not factored in the available paths, etc. I have just taken a simple linear distance. So this is how I can estimate my Manhattan distance, uh, which is a heuristic function. Um, so if I do it, I get my values, which would say that this block, the distance of this block from the goal is 16. But this block has only distance of one because it's one step away. This is two step away. So this, uh, by the, that estimate is say, 16 steps away. If I traverse this maze using best first search, uh, I have no other place to go but till here. Now I have a choice between moving to the right, which is least, less costly, 11, or moving to the left, which is more costly, 13. So the greedy best first search says go to the right because that is cheaper. Now it's a tie and I have no way to break the tie, but I can go and take a bad decision, realize I haven't reached the goal, but I have reached the end. So I come back and go further. The same case, because at this point four was is, uh, less costly. I took a bad decision on my greedy approach Realizing it wasn't a good a good decision because I haven't reached the goal, I come back and traverse till the goal. So this is how the greedy really best first search makes decision on which path to traverse. Now, the best path to have traversed would have been this. But uh, what happens is that in greedy really best first search, you can take bad decisions and go the longer way. Uh, you can uh, actually take the apparently cheap path and end up going to a longer digression. Uh, and there's no way that you can uh, retrieve that decision. So this is the basic greedy best first search. To add, uh, to add the element of estimating if we have taken a bad decision and retreating it, uh, there's a modification of greedy really best first search, which is called A star search. Now this search has two values, not one. One is that wherever you are, how much cost have you incurred to reach that node? Additionally, whatever is the estimated cost, cost to the goal. Now remember in the greedy best first search, you only had HN, which was the estimated goal, uh, goal cost, and you were not factoring in the cost you have incurred so far. So in this new uh, search algorithm, the way it works is that for, if you've taken, let's say you've taken the first step, so that's the cost you have already incurred and you expect it to incur this cost. Now you've taken two steps. So this is the cost you've incurred and you expect it to have incurred this. On this, our cost so far will be three and our estimated future cost will be four, 14, sorry, right? So we go where the sum total of this cost is lesser than the next step. Over here, our cost is five plus 12, 17. 
uh, this will be the sixth step. Six plus 13 will be 19. And over here, six plus 11 will be 17. So we take uh, what is apparently a better choice or a cheaper choice. Now, by now we have seven plus 10, 17 cost. And over here, had we, had we moved from fifth step to here as a sixth step, the cost would have been 19. So this cost is still more than the cost we have incurred so far. Now, if you see the cost has started to uh, grow and we have still not reached the goal. So uh, our cost by now is 19 over here. And our cost over here would have been 19. We were trying to ignore this so that we can go the cheaper way. But now it's not cheaper anymore. It's the same. 14 plus 5 and 6 plus 13 is the same. So for us to take the decision to move here or for us to take a decision to move here depends on the next step. Moving on the sixth step and 13 or estimated cost, this is 19. And this will be a 15 plus six, which is a 21. So now this cost has increased. Therefore, we don't go any further on this path, but we go on this path. And then we keep moving to the cheapest possible so, you know, uh, the greedy best first search moved all the way to this very long path and reached here. It never thought or it had no mechanism to go back and, and re retreat the bad decision and go back to the better decision. However, in this A star modification, we factor in the past cost, in cost incurred. And by factoring in the past cost incurred, we have this additional feature of revisiting our bad decision and not getting stuck in overly expensive paths, which apparently seemed less costly. Uh, A star search is admissible. Uh, it is A star search works best when it is admissible and it is consistent. Admissible means that the, when we estimate a heuristic of the cost, it should never be more than the true value. So we should never overestimate. We should never predict that our goal is further than it actually is. So that is when A star search is optimal, when we have estimated the cost to be exact same or lesser but not more than what it is in true life secondly it should be consistent which means that over here this expression says that the cost of the next function should be less than the function ahead so my step one cost should be less or equal to my step two cost every time i take a step the cost that i have now incurred should be more than the cost i was incurring a step earlier 